Welcome, everybody, to this special edition of the eClinical Works podcast here at the National Conference in Dallas, Texas. My name is Adam Salati, and I'm here speaking with Josie Van Schulten from River Road Medical Group in Oregon. Welcome, Josie. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so we're here at the uh, National Conference broadcasting live with everybody. It's a very special time. And Josie, I hear that this is not your first rodeo. Uh, yeah, it's not. This is my sixth. <laughs> what keeps you coming back to the National Conference? Um, there's always something new to learn. Um, I always like to see, you know, showcase what the new products are that are coming out so I can start thinking about how I want to implement that in the clinic, how I want to use it. Um, we always bring several, um, several people from our office because it's just a great bonding time, a great time for them to learn, and a great time to have fun. That's great that you involve the whole team. Uh, and now you're, you're not only here to learn, you're also here to share a little bit of your uh, knowledge and expertise. Isn't that right? You have a presentation coming up? I do. Uh, Megan and I are presenting tomorrow at 1130. I'd kind of thought about this for a while. It's a little bit intimidating to do, but some of the my favorite sessions every year are the ones done by clients, just because, again, you get to see how they're using the system, what their ideas are, and how you might incorporate those into your own practice. So, And we certainly don't have all the answers but I figured it was our turn to stand up and give some ideas and keep the conversation going. Well, that's the power of a network, right? right. Sharing ideas and learning from each other and, and improving together, right? Just like eClinical Works and our clients try to improve healthcare together, uh, you're doing the same thing. Now, tell, so tell us a little bit about what uh, people who aren't here at the conference could expect from your presentation. So our presentation is um, patient engagement strategies um, to help transform your organization. We are a primary care office, so we are in the thick of trying to meet quality measures, and um, we've gotten pretty good at earning some bonus funds from our Medicaid and our Medicare programs. And you can't do that without patients participating. There's no way, you can't wait for them to come in. <laughs> and so um, we're gonna talk about some of our favorite tools um, in ECW to communicate with our patients. Right, and that's really one of the push, uh, one of the big pushes uh, in, in a lot of these practice transformation ideas, like going from fee-for-service to value-based care. We need to start thinking of the patient when they're not in front of us and right. ask the question, well, who should be in front of us? Right. And how, do, how can we uh, help care for them? So what are some of the things that you have been doing or learning uh, on that road to value-based care? Um, so, like I said, definitely you need to include the patient. Um, we found the most effective way to involve and communicate with your patient is to sign them up for the Hilo app or the patient portal. Um, in the beginning, it, quite frankly, is a lot of work. It's an investment because <laughs> it takes a while until you hit that critical mass where you have the majority of your um, patient base signed up. And once you hit that mass, then then it becomes a really powerful tool for staff members that instead of picking up the phone, it's like, oh, I could just send a message or send them, you know, send them a text message. And um, it opens up a whole new world of ways to communicate. And now that you have reached that critical mass, as you said, do you find that that um do you find that that becomes uh, overwhelming? Is there too much communication going on? I know that's a big concern with people. You know, we get them on the portal, oh. and now all of a sudden, you know, instead of 20 phone calls, now we have 300 messages. Is that what you found? or, or? No. Actually, I think you would probably need to ask our patients that question because it's always us saying, you need to come in. You're due to come in. <laughs> it's time for your Medicare wellness visit. We haven't seen you. It's really more the other way. I think some of them sometimes feel hassled, especially until they get dialed in. You know, sometimes you inadvertently send them, you know, the text, the portal message, the phone call reminder. And of um, course, we help you to track their preferences so that we're yes. not communicating them, communicating with them in a way that they don't, Four don't times, want. Right, exactly. We all make that mistake. <laughs> uh, now, uh, you mentioned, I, I believe we've talked We've talked before, you were a member on one of our uh, previous podcasts, we came to visit you at your office, Yes. and uh, you shared a, a little tidbit that I thought was very interesting when you were trying to get your patients on board with all of these initiatives. I think you actually brought in an intern uh, yes. uh, from local you know, area yeah. to help you educate your patients. So what did that intern do with your patients? How did they on board them? So we had an intern just um, spend time in the waiting room um, approaching patients and asking them if they would like to learn more about either the portal or the app and if they, you know, if they were using it, if they had questions so they could show them and explain to them some of the benefits. Uh, now, uh, of course, we're, all, we're talking about this in the context of a, a shift from 
uh, fee for service to value based care. I think a lot of the things that you've been talking about have been, you know, to bring the rest of your uh, practice and involving them as a care team. Right. Um, and also, okay. uh, when we're when we're talking about that shift, you know, there might be some concern or some. Uh, 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 I guess concerns the best word yeah. about what will happen, you know, to to the operation side of the practice. You know, will we be able to survive this shift and and, and thrive through it? What have you found to that transition to be like in terms of, you know, let's let's talk about keeping the lights on, for example. Right. Um, when I first started down this path, I think I I thought that fee for service would kind of slowly decline and that this fee for value, these bonus programs would slowly cannibalize our fee for service income. And actually it was interesting preparing my slides it is really, it really is the opposite. They're both, <laughs> they're both going up together. And I think that that's because a lot of the fee for value piece is done by staff. It's a team based approach. It's not all dependent on the provider to get these pieces done. It's our staff members who are calling and sending the messages and looking in the CCMR and trying to find patients who are due for things um, and closing care care gaps and keeping track of, you know, where we are for those programs, um, you know, that's all work that staff does and is a new source of income. So uh, when we're moving towards that team-based approach, it sounds like we're, we're removing that bottleneck that was, let me get that provider into that room to see the patient directly right. and do all of the things that we need to do, you know, to, to get the reimbursement and stuff like that. Now it is being spread out and people are recognizing the fact that, you know, you need to involve that care team and uh, you were a PCMH uh, um, yes. uh, participant as well, and that's uh -huh. a big push of that program, right? To bring people up to their highest level right. of, of participation in the practice. Right. I think actually our providers have really liked it that, you know, I think when you first get ECW, it's all about just trying to figure out how to use the system and trying to get stuff in there. But now that we've learned how to get things in there in a structured way, you know, structured format that it's usable and people can find it. Um, you know, rather than relying on the patient, you know, did you get a flu shot? You may or may not get an, you know, an honest answer that, you know, we have that data right there at our fingertips. Uh, now, another thing that we talked about when we came to visit you in Oregon was the fact that you, I believe, had just brought on a new provider. Yes. And uh, you were looking to use some of the uh, patient engagement tools like open access scheduling through Hilo. Uh, uh, to, to help get them up to speed. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and how that's been going for you. Um, that has actually been very successful for, for us. Um, we're a small clinic and we definitely don't have the marketing budget that some of the larger multi-specialty groups do. And so we have done some Google online advertisements that if somebody is searching you know, in our area with symptoms, um, our ad will come up and it will take them to our website. And on our website, there's the widget for Hilo that they can click on and um, pick their appointment time and get in. And actually, we have um, doubled the number of new patients per month with this strategy. So we're well, that's, pretty pleased. That's great to know. Uh, I know people sometimes are a little tentative uh, in terms of whether they want to get on board with that, but it sounds like it's working great for you. Um, and uh, I think uh, another final aspect that I'd like to ask you about is, uh, uh, you know, we're talking about all this patient engagement, and one of the ways that we can engage our patients is to actually get feedback from them uh, mm -hmm. for how we're doing. And mm -hmm. I know you had done the CAP surveys with your practice as part of the PCMH initiative. Uh, tell us about that. Uh, yeah, when we first started, you know, we did the old school, hand out the papers, you know, staff wouldn't necessarily want to hand them out to somebody who was upset, you know, just not intentionally trying to skew our data, but just not wanting to upset someone further. So um, the automated uh, system is much better. Um, we've actually, you know, just sent a link, SurveyMonkey link out before um, through the patient portal blast and been able to capture data that way. We also have used um, decision aids and other patient education links in our uh, portal blasts and campaigns as well and found them to be effective. That's great. And uh, as you mentioned, you, you're using uh, one method of doing it, using an outside tool, giving the patients that link through the messenger uh -huh. uh, uh, tool, which is a great way to 
get that message out to a lot of people very mm -hmm. quickly. Um, and of course, eClinical Works also offers uh, our version of the CAP survey. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and uh, as you may or may not have seen during our keynote, uh, we unveiled a, a pretty cool feature this year of uh, a new patient survey tool that you can use uh, with your messenger campaign. So That's exciting. You know, hopefully we'll see a, a lot of people using that in the future. Well, Josie, yeah. uh, uh, thank you very much as always. I wish you the best with your presentation. Thank you. Uh, this has been a great interview. Uh, for more eClinical Works podcasts, you can check us out on iTunes, YouTube, or my.eclinicalworks.com. For the eClinical Works podcast, I'm Adam Salati. Thanks for joining us. This broadcast and its contents are the sole property of eClinical Works and are protected by federal law and international treaties. You are strictly prohibited from making a copy of, modification of, or form of rebroadcasting or re-encoding this broadcast without prior written permission from eClinical Works Public Relations, except as many be permitted by law. This broadcast is provided for informational purposes only. It is intended as a personal, non-commercial use. Product specifications are subject to change without notice. Please contact eClinical Works Public Relations with any questions. eClinical Works V10 EHR is ONC HIT 2014 edition certified as a complete EHR. eClinical Works V10 CC 2014 95 54 47-1